Welcome to the 2021 Perry Sound and Muskoka Rock the Dock Impact Awards. My name is Lance DeCare, and I'm the chair of Perry Sound Muskoka Community Network, otherwise known as PMCN. This is the third Impact Award ceremony celebration, celebrating the entrepreneurial spirit found in Perry Sound and Muskoka. COVID delayed but could not stop the Impact Awards. I'd like to thank the Perry Sound Founder Circle, the Muskoka Founders Circle, our sponsors, Shop Muskoka Lakes, Labor Market Group, Georgian College, and of course, Fednor. And thank you as well to Rotary, the Town of Perry Sound, Township of Muskoka Lakes, Joan ben Benden and Bill Colgate from Flip Events, Jenna Green, Todd Porter, Dominika Zapolnik, and Stuart Morley. Thank you all for coming and we'll begin. Hi everyone, my name is Megan Lorty and my beautiful colleague here is Casey and we're the two halves of Journey into Truth. Journey into Truth is a service which aims to tell the truth about Canada's relationship with Indigenous peoples and to spark a light in people to begin their own reconciliation journey by navigating decolonizing practices and actions with most aligned with you in your life. Today we're here to offer a land acknowledgement, but before we get started, we really wanted to set the stage about why it's important to do so. Land acknowledgements represent a few very important things. First, it tells the truth. It tells the truth of what colonization is. It tells the truth that Indigenous people have been here since time immemorial and were here before settlers. And it tells the truth of the enduring presence and resiliency of Indigenous people who are here today and have moved through colonization to be here in what we call Canada in 2021. It also acts as a way to position yourself in alignment with decolonizing practices and reconciliation. It also holds you publicly accountable for continuing to do these actions in the further, but with the hopes and the goals of doing, continuing to do additional actions and greater actions to move the needle towards reconciliation. And finally, it's a beginning of a conversation. It's a beginning of a conversation on reconciliation and decolonizing practice with the hopes of others to spark their journey as well. Now we're gonna move into the land acknowledgement which Casey will offer in a second, but we wanted to also let you know that this is in respect to the local territory here in Barrie. Miigwech Megan for that beautiful introduction. So now I'm going to present the land acknowledgement and it is an honor to do so. The land acknowledgement is a response. It is a response to keep with indigenous protocol build respectful relationships between Indigenous and non-Indigenous peoples in Canada in a response to the 94 recommended calls to action contained in the National Centre for Truth and Reconciliation. It is customary to acknowledge the traditional territories, ancestral lands of Indigenous peoples. Please note that the respective acknowledgement below is to be made as part of opening prayers, comments, introductions, and to be made available for all to see. Therefore, we would like to acknowledge the sacred land on which we gather on today. This land has been the site for human activity for thousands of years and was previously Wendat territory, but this nation perished due to disease brought over by the settlers. Currently, it is the territory of the Anishinaabek. The Anishinaabek include the Odawa, Ojibwe, and Potawatomi nations, collectively known as the Three Fires Confederacy. We are dedicated to honoring Indigenous history and culture. We also recognize the enduring presence of Indigenous people on this land and are committed to moving forward in the spirit of decolonization, reconciliation, and respect. Miigwech and thank you. Miigwech. Thanks very much, Casey. Hello, everyone. My name is Rick Galmazzi. I'm the executive chair of the Muskoka Foundry Circle. It was just about five years ago when I went my own business and I got a phone call from Stuart Morley from PMCN. Uh, I almost didn't take the call to be honest because uh, I thought it would be one of another one of Stuart's uh, crazy ideas. He's sort of full of them but I am glad I took this call because it was a very good idea. He got me sold on his idea for a founder circle and I jumped at the opportunity to be involved. We had our first meeting, as I said, just about five years ago at Sawdust City Brewery. I agreed to chair that meeting. 
I agreed to chair the next meeting because we had some excitement. And then um, before I knew it, I agreed to serve as executive chair for Muskoka Foundry Circle, which I've been doing for the last couple of years. And so we, uh, we were able to get a number of people together and uh, the idea seemed to have some legs. We talked about it, we got excited about it. I agreed to host a second meeting, we had more people. And sure enough, um, I agreed to be the first chair, which I was happy to do. We're now in our third year and um, it's going strong. And we would invite any of you who would like to know more Muskoka Founder Circle or Perry Sound Area Founder Circle to hit our website and learn more about it and talk to any of us. At its core, the real, the real strength of this, the reason that we do it is yes, we're interested in development, but we're also interested in paying forward the good fortune that we've had. The good fortune that we've, success that we've experienced are a combination of our own hard work, our own good fortune, and the environment that we live in. And the environment that we live in right now is Perry Sound, Muskoka. And so we want to celebrate and help those who are going to take it forward into the next generation of great businesses and great business ideas. And so we're happy to kick in a little bit of money and a little bit of our time to do that. So that's what this is all about today. For the Muskoka Group, this is our third annual uh, Founders Choice Awards. Uh, we started with one award, last year we did two awards, and this year we're pleased to be able to announce three award winners this evening. We're also pleased to welcome the Perry Sound Area Group to the Founders Circle family. They've done a great job in getting on board very quickly. They're excited about it, and we're happy to have them, as I said, join our family. And of course, thank you to PMCN for giving us this, this platform to announce our winners. So thank you again for being here. And without further ado, let me introduce my partner in crime, the chair of the Perry Sound Area Founders Circle, Chris Pettinger. I mean, Chris. Hey, Rick, thanks a lot. Hi, everybody. I'm Chris, I'm at Perry Sound Brewing Company right now, and I'm just gonna take you out to the office that I've been working in during the pandemic this spring. Here I am out on the beautiful patio in downtown Perry Sound. Of course, in the background here's the namesake that we named our brewery after. And I anticipate that a lot of you are gonna have trouble with your internet connections tonight, right around seven o'clock, 7.30 perhaps, there might be a hockey game on. Well. Here we are out on the patio, and this is my 1987 Volkswagen pop-top camper that I fully restored in the last while. Let's go inside, and we'll get started. Ah, oh, well, that's better. Out of the sun. Us gingers tend to burn really quickly. So here we are. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Chris Pettinger, and I'm the owner, one of the two owners of Trussell Brewing Company in Perry Sound. And I'm here to tell you a little bit about how I came to be involved with Perry Sound Area Founder Circle. And there are some similarities to Rick's story we'll get into shortly. My wife and I moved to Perry Sound almost 30 years ago. She got her first job working for the local board of education, and I was commuting to North Bay for my degree program in English literature. Talk about finding work in my field. It turns out that English lit consists mostly of stories about alcohol or was written under the influence of alcohol. True facts. It may be the understatement of the year, but there were few full-time careers for an English major in the Perry Sound area at that time. Little did I know then that my journey would lead me to where I am now. A little bit about that journey and how I connect with the Founder Circle now. I started my first company way back then after university with a repayable loan from two of my family members, one for $10,000 and the other for $15,000. I bought $85,000 worth of high-end computer equipment and full-color digital printing equipment, some of the only equipment that was available at that time with that technology in Ontario. 
I taught myself how to do high-end digital design and started selling my products and services. And exactly a year later, I paid my creditors back in full. I look back now and I remember how important that seed money was to me at the time. That is the same origin story of many entrepreneurs and of some of the finalists at tonight's awards gala. In 2015, we incorporated Trestle Brewing Company and began planning in earnest. There were bumps and hurdles and barriers, and most importantly, there were naysayers. Why are naysayers important, you ask? Well, because naysayers drive entrepreneurs. Entrepreneurs say what is possible. And being an entrepreneur is an artistic expression that demonstrates the freedom of possibility and creation. I really believe in that. My happiest moments in business aren't looking at spreadsheets. My happiest moments are in business are when I get to be creative and do really neat things with our company and particularly impress the younger people who work at my company with the world of possibility that can be theirs as well. So a good example of that is the recent draft craft program that we've just launched out on Georgian Bay. How are we going to do that? We're going to work at it and we're going to make it happen. In 2018, after being open for our first summer, this kind of like suave, frumpy, comfortable looking guy with a hint of a Trumpian comb over and some strange, possibly exotic foreign accent sat at my bar and introduced himself. Hello, my name is Stuart Moley, he said. From, I'm from PMCN, and I wanted to talk to you about an idea for Perry Sound. So you get a group of about 30 to 50 people together, and you each put in $1,000 of your own money out of your own pockets into a pot, and you give it away to an entrepreneur in a Dragon's Den-style competition. Sorry for the accent there, Marlies. I can't get the right. I'm not sure where it's from. I hear possibly South Africa, Australia in there, um, you know, maybe Britain, but it's just like, who knows? So I kind of sat there with my jaw agape. Well, after I picked my job off the floor, which I hoped he didn't notice, I said, I don't think it's quite the right time yet for that. I explained that I thought that the business climate in our area may not be prepared for something quite that innovative just yet. Well, in summer, fall 2019, we ended up soliciting participants and we ended up with over 30 people contributing to the first uh, incarnation, the inaugural uh, Perry Sound Area Founder Circle. They put their money where their mouths were. And I want to take a moment to recognize them and thank them all. We have folks like Dave Ritchie and Dave Garrigan, James Cox, Kirby Hall and David Adams, Steve Torrance and Daryl Glimpse, Dan DiNicolo and Neil Tucker, Dellard Labrosse and Greg Lubalenkov, Howard Oldham and Kevin Barks, Gabby Latka and Jim Beatty, Greg Swanson and Bill Connor, Murray Orr and Ta Tanya Blencarn, Chris Madden, Ted Scott, Fawn Horvath and Claudette Boyd, Shannon Mingezi, Maureen Cubberly, Linda West, Paul Schofield, Roger Alexander, Teresa Morley, and finally, RBC and the town of Perry Sound. It was a lot easier than I thought to onboard these fine people, and sometimes I felt like I was running a Ponzi scheme. Chairing our founder circle meetings was challenging and very rewarding. I tried to promise every meeting would be an hour or less, and we pretty much stuck with that. We went over maybe 10, 15 minutes here or there, but it was basically an hour, let's get it done. Chair, uh, after an almost, almost a full global pandemic later, here we are about to award two prizes unconditionally that we hope will help these entrepreneurs move the needle for their business. Without further ado, I'd like to meet, I'd like you all to meet uh, Brian Hartman from Forever Barbecue and Sonia McEwen from Adventure Academy. Take it away, Sonia and Brian. My name is Sonia McEwen and I own Adventure Academy Inc. 
We are a Regio inspired preschool located in Perry Sound. We opened in October of 2019. The Reggio Amelia approach views children as competent, creative, and curious learners who are full of potential. The concept of Adventure Academy was born when I was searching for childcare for my daughter. As a teacher, I was looking for a program that aligned with my own educational philosophy, but also had exceptional customer service, was safe, reliable, and consistent for families in the community, and also had a bright, warm, and welcoming space. In the spring of 2018, I started a small program out of my home for five children, including my daughter, and interest quickly grew. So I moved the program to our current campus, became licensed by the Ministry of Education, and incorporated the business. We are the only preschool in Perry Sound. We have been open for just over a year and a half, and our wait list has increased to include over 75 families. I employ three full-time educators, one part-time and two occasional staff. The success of our preschool program has inspired us to grow our school age program and we'd love to be able to offer summer camps, PD day camps and after school programming. There is no relationship that holds greater reward or responsibility than the one we have with the children in our lives. We are so thankful for the families who entrusted their children in our care, and we look forward to continuing to grow and serve the community of Perry Sound. Hi, I'm Brian Hartman of Forever Barbecue. We are creating innovative products to enhance the outdoor entertainment experience. Our initial product is a barbecue tank smart sensor that indicates when you'll run out of fuel. It has many features, including leak detection. We foresee this product having a successful impact in the $5 billion global barbecue marketplace. Our plans include the design, manufacture, and sale of all of our products in Perry Sound, Ontario. Well, thanks very much, Sonia and Brian. And uh, Chris, thank you very much. Uh, really enjoyed that story of your life. Too bad we didn't have more time to hear more of it. And uh, just saying to all you future entrepreneurs out there, you may, have, you may have noticed the difference in what Chris was wearing and what I'm wearing. And, where Chris is living and where I'm living. So if you're thinking about where you might start your entrepreneurial business in Perry Sound or Muskoka, you know, just, just saying. Couldn't resist, Chris. We love our Perry Sound area neighbors. Okay. Now, ladies and gentlemen, it's, uh, you didn't know this was going to be an audience participation event, but we've got a treat for you. We're going to introduce you to a contest. So, you know, you will all be entrance this evening and all you need to do is have a phone and I'm sure a high percentage of you have your phone with you and if you do you're eligible to play a little game we call three magic words to introduce or to tell you how it works let me introduce a Canadian stage and screen actor extraordinaire our very own Bill Colgate, and his business partner and life partner, the lovely Joan Benden, whose company Flip Events produced and directed our virtual event this evening. So, Bill, what the heck is this Three Magic Words contest? Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Bill Colgate here. I hope you're having a wonderful time this evening. Speaking of time, it is now time for the first of our three magic words. Now, just to review, I would like Hi, to... Joan. Hi, Joan. How are you? Um, I'm, I'm very well, thank you. I'm just... Okay, uh, what talking. about the three magic words? What are Well, they? I was about... No, I'm not going to tell the good people the three magic words. And you know what they are because you came up with them. Can I tell them one? Uh, no, I don't think that's Just good. a little that, hint? Oh, Joan, I think they're about to close the bar. <gasps> As I was saying, just to review, over the course of this evening, Three magic words will appear at three different times. What we would like you to do is either take a selfie or have your own personal photographer take a photo of you with the magic word on the screen when it appears. You'll be given enough notice, there'll be a countdown. Uh, 
So what we want is a picture of you, clear we, that we can see you and the word. So three words, three pictures. Send them in to us. There will be an address on the screen and you will be eligible for a $500 gift certificate at the JW Marriott Rosso. Okay, enough. Let the countdown begin. Five, four, three, two, one. Thanks very much, Bill. Okay, now it's time to get down to business. The reason we're here is to introduce you to some of the most exciting new companies uh, that we hope you're going to see for years and years in the Perry Sound area and Muskoka region. So I'm very pleased to introduce to you the first two finalists for the Muskoka Founders Choice. Please meet Todd Croxel from Croxel Farms and Ian Calhoun of Axiom Audio. Todd, over to you. My name is Todd Croxel. Uh, I own and operate an aquaponics farm in Huntsville, Ontario. Croxel Foods Inc. has three distinct products. We sell leafy greens and herbs uh, to the community. We sell a fertilizer uh, that we get from our process, and we also sell fish. I'm a controlled environment farmer, and I grow food for people in communities through the use of aquaponics. And aquaponics is the relationship, harmonious at that fact, uh, between fish and the leafy greens that filter the water for the fish, and then the water cycle continues. The Mayans discovered this way back in the day, and I've asked myself to commercialize that. So what I've discovered is that I am a controlled environment farmer specializing in food and fish, and I provide that those services to the community. Yeah, hi, I'm uh, Ian Calhoun, president of uh, Calhoun Audio, which is better known as Axiom and Bryston in the audio marketplace. Uh, we manufacture high-end audio products, doing it for decades. We are heavily into the research side of audio, so... Uh, the real nuts and bolts, the real science behind it. I mean, this is an industry that has a lot of hype in it, but there are a few companies like ours that concentrate on the science and it does result in better sounding products. But an interesting thing happened along the way is that uh, a number of years ago, the world of audio started to include a what would we would call a wireless component, whether you're streaming it, uh, whether you're, 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 you're just talking to the speakers wirelessly, the speaker wires are gone, all the wires are gone. The whole, the whole thing was to get rid of the wires. You could just go on your phone and pick a song and it plays. So we, we had to really sort of reinvent ourselves and become, become a software company and, and a leading edge software company. That's what we've done. And we've now developed this software, which is very slick, very easy to use. It, it does everything you could want it to do. And, um, you can, you can use it in a complicated fashion if you want. It, it'll, it'll play music from a NAS and all of these things. Uh, it'll, of course, it's multi room, or you could just simply play it from your iPhone over airplay and, it's that simple. So, or Spotify, use Spotify Connect. We're bringing good sound to wireless speakers. That's what we're doing. Thanks very much, Todd and Ian. And uh, I mean, how about those two companies? If you ever wondered whether or not there was innovation in Muskoka and Perry Sound, uh, you don't have to wonder. We have some great, great companies doing some really, really leading edge things. Okay, now. How many of you have ever been to Algonquin Park? Of course you've been to Algonquin Park. You know the park for its beautiful flora and fauna and lakes, its natural beauty. But if you're lucky, you've also experienced some of the other elements of the park, like the Natural Heritage Education Program, the Algonquin Park Visitor Center, the Logging Museum, the Art Center, and the Outdoor Theater. And if you've enjoyed those, 
It's thanks to the next guest that you're going to meet, the gentleman who's responsible for overseeing all those, Algonquin Park Chief Park Naturalist Rick Struggs, who has something special for you to see and hear, more importantly, to hear. Watch and listen closely because you may want to try this yourself the next time you're at the park. Okay, Joan, over to you to introduce us to your friend, Rick. Hi, good evening. I'm Joan Fenton, and I'm here with Rick Strauss, the Chief Naturalist for Algonquin Park, and we're here to have a wolf howl. Rick. Yes, well, thank you for inviting me. You know, we're so lucky in Muskoka. We've got so much amazing wildlife all the way around us. And, and there's so many different ways to experience it. You know, we can walk in the woods. You, we can pick blueberries and taste them. You know, we can watch birds. There's just, you know, we can use all of our senses to experience wildlife. But there's something about sounds. Yes. That was a big bird up there. Yes. Yeah. Sounds. So there's something about sounds that's really special, like that winter wren that's calling in behind mm -hmm. us. Um, and you know, for, for a lot of us, certain sounds really mean something to us. Like for me, the call of a loon is really special about this area or white-throated sparrow. But there's another sound that's just classic. And that of course is hearing a wild wolf howl. I mean, <sighs> that's really special. And we were hoping to take everybody to Algonquin, but that didn't work. So we're taking Algonquin to you guys. Yay! So, Rick. If I were to try to get a wolf to howl, if I went, ho wolf, ho wolf, would I hear anything back? Not likely, Joan, not <laughs> likely. It takes a little bit. You know, it's not really complicated to do. Wolves howl because it's a form of communication. It's a way of them of communicating to each other saying, hey, I'm over here, where are you? And that's helpful for an animal that lives in a wooded landscape like, like Algonquin or Muskoka. So, if we want to try to get wolves to respond, the best thing that we can do is wait for a nice quiet time and howl as loud as we can. Okay. That's all That's all there is to it. Can you show us how to do what? I sure can. Okay. I'm going to turn this way okay. and see if there may be wolves up on that, that uh, ridge over there. Yay. All right. Okay. Ooh. Howling back. Do you hear them howling back? I don't. I think you're hearing things. No, uh, my hearing is really good. Thank you again, Rick, for bringing Algonquin Park to us here at home. You're quite welcome. Thank Enjoy you. your evening. Thank you. What a perfect segue to introducing our next finalist from the Perry Sound Area Founder Circle. This one is close to my heart because many of you know, I was raised in the woods by wolves, not unlike Mowgli, close to a van. So I'm pleased to present to you, Diana Clements from the Perry Sound Forest School. Go video. My name is Diana Clements and I am the founder and chief educator at the Perry Sound Forest School. In the last 20 years, technology has changed our lives dramatically. It's changed the way that adults communicate and work. And for adults, most of this change has been very positive. But for healthy childhood development, this increase in technology has been disastrous and has resulted in a plethora of problems and difficulties that children are now facing. We have so many children now who are developing childhood obesity, who are developing diabetes as a result of the food they're eating and a lack of activity. We have children who have anxiety and children who come to school unable to sit and support themselves or even hold a pencil in order to be able to write. So a typical day at a forest school would involve us walking down to the meeting area together. Often parents walk their children down and leave them at our circle where we have some stumps set up 
Um, we begin by having a story together or a discussion, and then we plan our day together. After that, the children are free to choose whatever kind of activity they'd like to do. That's one of the, the important parts of Forest School is that it is inquiry-based and it is child-directed. So the children choose what they're, they're going to do most of the time. They choose where they're going to do it. So it could be climbing trees. It could be catching frogs. It could be building a fort together. Last summer, in the eight weeks of camp we had, we didn't go inside once. There were two times where we had to seek shelter under an overhang at the college, but we never went inside. During the winter, especially if we're with the younger group, we might go inside to eat so that their hands stay warm, but we really do try to stay outside at least 80 to 90% of our time. We usually have a ratio of one adult to five or less children. This means we have a lot of staff on site we keep our group sizes under 15. I think I have one of the best jobs in the world. I get to spend my time outdoors with children in nature. And together we get to explore and discover how things change over time. I follow their lead. I follow their interest. And I just help to make sure that what they're doing is safe enough for them. Thanks very much, Diana. And uh, Chris, why does it not surprise me that you were raised by wolves? Explains everything. All right, back to business. It is now my pleasure to introduce you to the next finalist company for the Muskoka Founders Choice Awards. Please meet business partners, Christy McDonald and Kevin Parchment and their company, EnviroLove. Envirolove offers sustainable product solutions. To date, we've diverted 1.4 million plastic bags from landfills and waterways. Bee Bags is a plastic-free, biodegradable, naturally derived product. So there's no plastic going into your oceans, there are no chemicals going into your foods. It is the safer choice. Bee Bags is the first 100% plastic-free bag on the market. It's made up of natural ingredients, which makes no chemicals leach into your food. We just introduced fire starters and bee wraps in an effort to be a zero waste company from the end products of creating bee bags. Envirolab is in the process of pilot testing a new paper bag. Its innovative technology will create a stronger water resistant bag and will replace the 15 billion bags at the end of aisle checkout. Small everyday changes can have a big impact. Help us clean up our lakes, waterways and oceans, one plastic bag at a time. Okay, thanks very much. So now that you know how the game works, three magic words, we even on purpose stopped and re-ran that first video for you so you could see it twice and hear it twice. You're welcome. Um, now that you know what to do, ready? Set your phasers on stun. Just kidding. That's an old Star Trek joke for those of you that are old enough to remember it. I know you're out there if you're smiling or laughing right now. All right, no. Get your phones and set them on photo, selfie photo, and be ready for the countdown. Be ready for the countdown. Okay, here we go. Joan, Joan, we need you on the dock. And I'm back. Yes, indeed. So we're here for the second magic word. I'm here to do the countdown for the $500 gift certificate to the JW Marriott Rosso Resort. Let the countdown begin. Five, four, three, two, one. I'm not sure whether it counts if you get me in your picture or not. We'll have to see. Anyway, we're running a little long, so I won't, uh, without further ado, um, for our listening pleasure, I'd like to introduce the mighty Mike Lopez. Mike? Well, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the entertainment 
part of the show. Uh, not that you haven't been entertained thus far, but uh, thanks for having me. I'd like to thank uh, Joan Benden from Flip Events for uh, asking me to be a part of your special evening here tonight. Uh, I was watching the videos of the uh, award finalists, and uh, I was really struck with the uh, the creativity. You know, uh, the, the 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 creative problem solving, you know, recognizing a, a need and finding a solution. I was really impressed, and the uh, the diversity of of businesses, the different businesses you all represent here. You know, you really are a, a very talented group of people, and I do applaud you all. So. When I was first approached about uh, performing for you tonight, at first I thought I'd, uh, you know, just sing and play guitar for you, do some songs. But um, I don't know, after seeing what a dynamic group you were, I kind of thought, well, you deserve something more than just some dirgy old folk music. So uh, I put together a little video for you. I hope you like it. Um, special for you guys here tonight it's a, a fun song you'll hopefully all recognize and i think it's a an interesting comment on uh, the role technology and innovation have to play you know in our collective evolution that this is a, this is a call from the past uh, to future generations uh, begging them for uh, fire King of the swingers, boys, the jungle VIP. I've reached the top and had to stop, and that's what's bothering me. I wanna be a man, man cub, stroll right into town and be just like the other men. I'm tired of monkeying around. Oh, ooby doo, I wanna be just like you. I wanna walk like you, talk like you do too You see it's true Even an ape like me Can learn to be a human too Well, I hope you enjoyed that. I uh, hope you enjoyed that as much uh, as I did putting it together for you. It was a lot of fun. And uh, 
Anyway, I'd like to say thanks again for having me and uh, congratulations to uh, to you all, especially, uh, you know, these days in the face of this pandemic and the extra challenges that uh, represents for uh, everybody and especially in the business community. How uh, I applaud you all again, encourage you all to keep going, keep with the perseverance. And, um, you know, I know that our all of our communities will be better off uh, with your thriving businesses. So uh, um, thanks again and uh, enjoy the rest of your evening and uh, good luck. And hopefully we'll see you uh, further down the road somewhere. All right. Good night. Ladies and gentlemen, that was uh, Mike Phillips, otherwise the Mighty Lopez. I don't know how uh, the Mighty Lopez got his name, but I can tell you that if you ever get an opportunity, it's a fabulous, fabulous night out at a place like, say, the Sawdust City Brewing Company in Gravenhurst, Ontario. Um, uh, and he, you can also hear him on Hunter's Bay Radio. So thanks, uh, thanks, Mike, Mighty Lopez, for that performance. Okay, let's keep this going. Let me... Um, allow me to introduce the final two contestants for the Muskoka Founders Choice Awards. Please meet Kurt Muntz and from his company Bubbler Buddy and Anya Kerr from Stepping Stone Early Learning Academy. Hello, Kurt. My name is Kurt Muntz and the company is called Bubbler Buddy. And I love the company and the things it does because it's one, it's super enjoyable to be out on the lakes and and getting to enjoy the different things that you do out on the ice. But two, it's it's a great great thing to be able to help solve a real problem that has has real issues. And and a lot of owners around here don't have the the knowledge that they are leaving themselves wide open to a lot of liabilities surrounding a, a dock bubbler. They they talk about. Um, the criminal code even talks about the consequences of creating open water. And, and this is, this is a product that allows you to show complete due diligence in an area that, uh, frankly, there isn't enough information out there for the, the homeowner on. So it's, it's, it's awesome to be able to, to have come up with a, an idea that is a real world solution to a, a real world problem. The bubbler buddy is actually a floating containment boom, similar to what's used for oil spills and, and things like that. It's, it's anchored to the bottom of the lake away from your dock where you want the open water to stop and the ice to start. So usually depending on how much open water or lake you have in front of your structure, the bigger the area, the more the ice can expand, so the further away you need to have it. Um, but it's, uh, it's basically a floating vinyl barrier that is, is actually containing the open water, or sorry, the warm water that your bubbler is bringing to the surface. So it allows you to have a floating visual perimeter that's containing your open water. And it also allows you to have a safety measure in place where if, if anyone were to fall off the dock or, or anyone would somehow find their way into it, which is much more difficult because it's such a smaller area, you have a, a floating mat basically that you're easily able to pull yourself around to shore. It allows you to protect your structure, but also protect your liability my name is Anya Kerr. I run a new and exciting childcare program in Muskoka called Stepping Stone Early Learning Academy. We are a nature-based program with an emphasis on creativity and the arts, giving children the opportunity to express themselves through art, music, dance, and yoga outside, on the trails, exploring, being kids in a natural environment. And we try to help them learn and prepare for school. First of all, a thousand monkeys and a thousand typewriters. And then all I got to say is, I know Rick's not really wearing pants. And a tuxedo makes an ape look like a man. This is silk. This is Tommy Bahama silk, otherwise known as Georgian Bay casual, but 
I want you to know also, I am a big fan of those stupid entrepreneur shows on TV. So I'm going to give you a pitch for a product similar to what you'd see on Shark Tank or on Dragon's Den, but in Chris style. So here we go. I want to take this opportunity tonight to product small batch fermented hot sauce made right here in Perry Sound. This high quality hot sauce is fermented in small batches using all ingredients grown in Ontario. It comes in two sizes, five ounce small and 10 ounce large. Small retails for $12 a bottle and large retails for $22 a bottle. It cost me about $2 million to make this hot sauce and it shortened my life by five to seven years. Super worthwhile though. Honestly, here we go. We've got our two far Every entrepreneur takes an idea and turns it into alchemy, turns it with alchemy into something that can be hot sauce or it can be about building a place that sells beer but is really in the people business. I'm pleased tonight to introduce our two last two finalists who are working on turning their ideas into gold. So please pay attention now to Jordan Higgins from Higgins and Phillips Innovations and Ross Armstrong from Solar Wind Initiatives. Roll those videos. Hi, my name is Jordan Higgins. I'm co-founder of Higgins and Phillips Innovations, a one-of-a-kind natural health products manufacturing company located in Perry Sound, Ontario, on the shores of Georgian Bay. Our company was born out of a vision to provide a non-toxic, evidence-based pain relief strategy for people suffering from both chronic and acute pain issues. We've all seen the decimation that opioid dependence can have in our families, communities, and across our country. And we knew at Higgins and Phillips that there had to be a better way. Our focus is on the mind-body connection and the ability of functional spatial movement to preserve long-term brain health and cognition. The combination of our spice mushroom blend and topical pain relief formula will be a conduit to reduce inflammation and to kickstart long-term health. In addition to partnering with a marketing and distribution company to move the visibility of our brand out of the local Perry Sound Muskoka area, we have also used our expertise in production management and quality assurance to help small and growing natural health product companies. We need to increase the capacity of our production to continue to support the growth of our flagship products and the growth of our partners. As we increase the production of these avenues, we look to hire technically savvy production staff and solidify our position as an employer in Perry Sound. My name is Ross Armstrong and I am the founder of Solar Wind Reliance Initiatives. Our product strategy is to combine solar and wind energy harnessing into a single platform that delivers significantly more energy per unit of area. Our goal is to empower and grow distributed power generation in the world. Everyone understands the economic benefits of producing their own electricity especially when you have consistently witnessed 7.5% price increases per year. But developments such as shopping malls, apartment buildings, hospitals, gas stations, and arenas, they uh, have space constraints that limit them. SWRI's solution changes this dynamic. We offer self-sufficiency. Our scalable platform and our flexible design approach will drive not just an electricity solution, but also heating solutions that can affordably replace natural gas heating, carbon free. Wind and solar energy projects have captured 93% of global renewable investment over the past 10 years. For every dollar of renewable investment, there is also a 95 cent investment in infrastructure that supports it. An integrated solution that combines two technologies to this point has not been pursued in the marketplace. Wind and solar energy are strongly negatively correlated with each other. And what this means is that when you combine 10 kilowatts of solar and 10 kilowatts of wind energy in a single unit, you get 
a 12 kilowatt power source, not 20. This approach lowers costs and it also lowers infrastructure investment as well. With our solution, we see the potential for projects such as a carbon-free Perry Sound Hospital producing its own electricity and heating on its own property using SWRI technology, an energy solution that would deliver 600 kilowatt hours per hectare. This is just one example of how SWRI can impact the Perry Sound region. SWRI stands ready to be an active participant in creating a changed world in energy. Thank you for your attention today. We look forward to hearing from you. Thank you very much. And uh, Chris, that's the last time I tell you one of my deep, dark secrets. And by the way, I don't really want to know what you are wearing south of the equator. All right. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, now just in case some of you habitual multiprocessors have been using your phones maybe to check your email or whatever other app you have open, I'm going to ask you now to close all those apps for a couple of good reasons. Number one, this is the last chance to use your phone to participate in the three magic words contest. So get ready to do that. And following that, we're going to announce our first prize winner. So, no, not our first prize winner, the first announcement of our many prize winners. So, get your phones ready. Bill and Joan. Bill and Joan, are you back? We're back. We're back. Joan and Bill, and this is the last time you have to see us this <laughs> evening because I'm sure you're sick of our faces. <laughs> so we're gonna make it quick. This is the third of our three magic words. So grab your cell phone or grab your personal photographer. Get ready for the countdown. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay, I hope you got that. Now, thanks for your patience. Hopefully you've had some fun. We've been definitely having fun doing this, but I'm pleased to enter the important of our show. The reason that you're all here to celebrate and to reward some outstanding entrepreneurs in the Muskoka Perry Sound area. I'm here to announce the $5,000 award winner from the Muskoka, from the Muskoka uh, Founders Choice finalists. And that winner is sealed envelope. And the winner is Croxel Foods, Todd Croxel. Congratulations, Todd. Oh, hello, Todd. Okay, yeah, congratulations. Thanks, Todd. Congrats, Todd. Thank you very much. Now we'll have the first award winner from the Perry Sound area, Chris. Thanks, Rick. This, I've got a bit of information first to share with you guys about our process. So first of all, our process here was to solicit applications from a wide range of entrepreneurs and reduce them down to five finalists using a set of scoring criteria that includes evaluating the following things, broad economic impact, innovation, scalability or potential for growth, profitability, and finally, the demand for the product or service. These things were evaluated in the two-step process to take our large pool of applicants down to a pool of applicants uh, of five people who are our finalists you've seen here tonight. Another initiative we undertook in 2019, 2019, was it that long ago? It was was to create a high school award in partnership with the Perry Sound High School business class. Through this award, we hope to foster lifelong entrepreneurship in students who show a keen interest in growing up in our community and building their own businesses here. But now it's time to announce the winner of our first Perry Sound Area Founder Circle Impact Award for $5,000. Our founders chose to keep the winners a secret until the night of the gala. 
the chief returning officer for the town of Perry Sound, and the CAO of the town of Perry Sound are the only people who know the winners, who the winners are tonight from our competition. I don't even know. Sometimes I wonder why people call me a mushroom. So I have this big envelope here, and inside this big envelope that's sealed, we've got two red envelopes. Oh, Clayton, I hope you got the right winners in the right envelopes. We've got one for $5,000 and one for $10,000. This is the $5,000 envelope. So now we're going to get this right to this. It is sealed still, Clayton. See, I didn't open it, steam it open or anything. And this is exciting. The winner is... The winner of our second place prize for $5,000 is Brian Hartman of Forever Barbecue. Congratulations, Brian. Hey, Brian, congratulations. Do you want to say a few words? Uh, just to, to thank you and the, and the Perry uh, Sound Founder Circle very much uh, for this opportunity. Also, would like to uh, thank the fellow uh, business innovators and, and business people from Perry Sound. They're all doing a, a great job in, in attempting to diversify the, the local economy. So thanks very much. Very good. Thanks, Brian. Rick, over to you. Thank you very much, Chris, and congratulations, Brian. Uh, Chris laid out for you the area that we use for scoring the entrepreneurs. Um, I can tell you that each of the three years that we've done it in Muskoka, we've just been astounded with the applications that we get. We get more applications every year every year and uh, some of the ideas are just uh, just fantastic uh, besides the opportunity to win cash the entrepreneurs that apply for our contest to be part of our contest also receive some free mentoring from the founders uh, they can take advantage of that mentoring at any point in time throughout uh, the journey of their of their business so as I said, this is a combination of cash and our own time and expertise, and uh, we hope that all the uh, finalists will take advantage of that opportunity. Okay, it's time now to announce the $10,000 award winner from the Muskoka Founders Choice Award finalists. Here we go. The envelope, please. And the winner of the $10,000 is Stepping Stone Ernie Early Learning Academy, Anya Kerr. Congratulations, Anya. Uh, thank you all so much. Thanks to the founders and the community of Muskoka. There's been uh, so much positive feedback for what we're doing here, and it really means a lot. Uh, I couldn't have done it without my staff and my husband. He's my business partner, and it really it means the world that to get positive feedback for everything we're doing. We're trying to build the community here. So thank you all so much. All right, thanks Rick and congratulations Stepping Stones. Um, I'd like to take a moment here. We're getting to the end of the presentation. This is the big prize for the Perry Sound Area Founders Circle, our big grand prize of $10,000 this year. We did set money aside in reserve as well. That money's being held in trust by the town of Perry Sound in a bank account, it's administered by our treasurer, who's Fawn Horvath, who is one of the bank's uh, administrators there. And I thank you, Fawn, for offering to do that. And thank you, town of Perry Sound, for uh, receiving the funds in trust and for managing disbursements, et cetera, for us. Really appreciate that. I'd also like to take a moment again to thank the other supporters of uh, this. Uh, absolutely Georgian Bay, which is a uh, tourism cooperative initiative here in the Perry Sound area, which I'm very passionate about. PMCN, of course, Stuart Morley, Teresa, Graham Porter, the whole Porter clan, uh, Joan, uh, Bill, uh, who else am I missing? Jenna, thanks. And oh, um, I forgot one, but anyways, and or more than one. And of course, um, really need to thank the people whose boots are on the ground to make these awards happen. And that's the founders themselves who 
take a thousand dollars out of their pocket and put it into the pool for building the awards and building the things that we do here, good works in Perry Sound. So thanks again. It's been an honor working with you this year. I'll be stepping down as chair after the Gal Awards, but I will stay on as a fervent supporter of uh, this project here in Perry Sound in a past chair capacity or something like that. And we've learned a lot this year. Our whole group has. We're going to review it all and we're going to make it better for next next uh, iteration of this thing. So now I have the privilege of awarding the grand prize of $10,000 to the first place winner of the Perry Sound Area Founders Circle Impact Awards. This is the envelope. This is the grand prize. I don't know who it is. Can I get a drum roll, please? Everybody do the drum roll on your table. Let's see here. We'll get this sucker opened up. Looks like someone used a lot of saliva to close these. All right. And the winner of the grand prize is... Have I told you guys about our new hot sauce yet? It's really off the rails. And the winner of the grand prize is, congratulations, Sonia McEwen and the Adventure Academy. Great job, Sonia. Can you come on down and join me on stage? Woo! Everybody give Sonia a big hand. Thank you hey, so much. Sonia. Thank yeah. you. Great job. I just want to say thank you to the Founder Circle, PMCN, everyone who has been part of this, all the other participants. Congratulations. This has been such a bright spot in a challenging year for all of us. So I just want to say thank you so much to everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Sonia, and congratulations. And we look forward to seeing you at reopening time sometime for a beer on the patio. Absolutely. Thanks, Chris. All right. Cheers. I have one other kind of announcement to make here uh, before I sign off for the evening. And it's about Perry Sound Forest School. So we included Perry Sound Forest School, Diana Clements' business, through the entire process of uh, doing the interviews, meeting the founders, uh, going through the entire thing, shooting the videos. But early on in the process, Diana disclosed to us that she was looking to change her business model from a for-profit business model to a not-for-profit business model. And our founder circle and Diana decided that we were going to exclude her from being eligible for the award but we wanted to include her and continue to include her through the process because the process is highly beneficial. Being able to interact with founders, business people, and people who care about developing our community through simple active initiatives like this is really beneficial. And Diana expresses her thanks to everybody for putting, helping her through this process. So thank you all for uh, a great award ceremony and a really and congratulations to our winners tonight. And I hope to see you guys another time. I'm going to turn it over to Rick now for their big grand prize award. Have a good night, everybody. And uh, thanks, Chris. It's been an absolute pleasure working with you this evening. Uh, thanks for the work that you did getting the Perry Sound Area Founders Circle going. Uh, the first year is always the hardest, and you pulled it off. So good for you and uh, enjoy your retirement from the, from the uh, founder circle group. Uh, if you run a brewery, you're not retired, that's for sure. Okay, before I announce our big uh, $15,000 award winner, I would also like to thank um, our administrative partner, and that is the uh, Rotary Club of Gravenhurst. Um, the uh, Muskoka Founders Circle is actually a project of the uh, Rotary Club of Gravenhurst. And founders that make donations receive a, uh, a, a tax deductible receipt from the Rotary Club that's all um, administered by the Rotary Club and specifically Teresa Morley who handles the money for us and does the uh, bookkeeping and keeps us all in line. So thank you. Um, thank you, Teresa. Thank you, Rotary Club of Gravenhurst. 
Um, and uh, thank you to all our founders. Uh, as, as Chris said, it's been a pleasure working with you. Um, I hope you all continue. I hope you, uh, we can all work together to um, uh, attract more founders to our group. We have lots of other things that we've been talking about uh, doing. Congratulations to the Perry Sound Area Group for initiating the uh, the uh, initiative with uh, with the with the uh, school. That's a great that's uh, a great initiative. Congratulations, um, our founders. Uh, if you are interested in becoming a founder or learning more, you can go to our website at MuskokaFoundersCircle.com. There you will also find uh, the names and pictures of all our founders. Um, I want to thank uh, Stuart Morley and the board at PMCM for putting on this great event. It's the third year in a row. Uh, it really ties a nice bow on the on the uh, the year of uh, Founder Circle. And uh, we'd also like to thank uh, Fednor for supporting PMCM. Fednor has been great to uh, the businesses in uh, Muskoka through the years that I've been here. And uh, thank you very much for your continued support. Really, really important to us uh, in our area. On the Skokin and Perry Sound. Uh, I, and finally, there's one special person that I would like to uh, to thank. Well, besides Bill and Joan and everyone uh, and Jenna from the from uh, the uh, Remo Platform Group, um, I also want to make a special thank you. Now that I've thanked the founders, thank all our founders to John Cooper. John was our very first founder. When it came time for us to ask people to put up their hands to write that first check of $1,000. Not only did John put up his hand, but he actually pulled out his checkbook and wrote the check. So he became the first founder. Actually, I think maybe it was his wife, Denise, who elbowed him in the side that really initiated that, but I'm not gonna go there. As a team, they were the first founder. And uh, John and Denise, you were the very first social influencers before we even knew what social influencers were, and uh, right along following you were our initial group of founders. So thank you for your leadership there. Okay, now to announce the $15,000 winner, the grand prize winner for the 2021 Muskoka Founders Choice Awards. I have the envelope and the winner is Envirolove. Christy McDonald and Kevin Parchman. Congratulations, Christy and Kevin. Thank you so much. I'm very excited. I thought saw this prop and thought I'd have a little fun with it. But thank you to the founders and for everybody here tonight. I'm really impressed by the numbers that came to this Off the Dock event. And I really want to thank the founders for believing in our business. And I look forward to the mentorship and everybody that can help bring solutions to plastic that is choking our world. So thank you for your time and all of your support by to all the found from all the founders. I'm really grateful. Thank you. Congratulations again, Christy and Kevin. And one last one last thank you from me on behalf of all of us associated with Founders Circle and Muskoka and Perry Sound. Thank you who came out to support this impact awards. Continue to follow us on social media for groups. Um, and uh, we hope to see you in person next year. Sorry, Lance, if I, if I uh, took your, your part of your final line, uh, but uh, I'll sign off now. Congratulations again, Christy and Kevin and Vira Love. Um, and Lance, the final word is yours. Thanks, Rick. First off, congratulations to all the winners. Uh, certainly on behalf of the PMCN, um, I, it's, uh, I'd like to thank all the winners. And it's not just the winners, it's all the participants, all of the different um, people who put their name forward. It's, it's an uneasy thing and it, it took some, uh, some effort. And hopefully there's a uh, benefit to be had even just from the, the exposure. And um, so I would uh, like to say certainly when we're thinking people, what a great job by Chris and Rick. I'll, I'll pause for applause here. Uh, that's enough. Okay, and uh, and certainly Joan and Jenna behind the scenes, a uh, uh, great great job. Um, um, <laughs> we made it through this far. Uh, thanks again to the sponsors: ShopMuskokaLakes.ca, Labor Market Group, Breeze, Max Webb, Georgian College, and of course Fednor. Um, we look forward to seeing all of you in person next year. Um, hopefully, presumably at the Marriott, and uh, uh, hopefully all of this other nonsense will be behind us. Um, 
Take care. Um, the room will be open uh, for the next uh, 26 seconds, according to my uh, screen. Um, so you can still uh, bop around. If you do want to go up and uh, see um, the different uh, um, winners, uh, floor three is where the Muskoka finalists are, and floor um, two is where the Perry Sound finalists are. Uh, so good night, and thanks for making the 2021 Rock the Dock Impact Awards a success. We'll see you all next year in person. Take care.